Hi everyone, and welcome to our LF100, LF200 label finisher tech support series. In this video, we'll cover how to create a print and cut file to use with your LF100 or LF200 label finishing system. By the end of this video, we'll have two files that look like this. The print file has a black mark on the side of the artwork. This is the file that you'll use to print on your Astronova printer. The other file is the cut file. It also contains a black mark and the outline that you want to cut. This file will be sent to the blotter using the software of the finishing system. Now let's get started. For this tutorial, we'll use Adobe Illustrator to create the print and cut files. You can use similar software, but Adobe Illustrator is always preferred. The total width of the continuous roll that we'll use for this tutorial is 5.125 inches or 130 millimeters. We'll use millimeter units since it's used in the finishing system software. Open Adobe Illustrator and click File and then New to create a new template. Name your document or template, for example, print file. Change the unit of measure to millimeters. Set the width and the length of the template. The width of the template is the total width of the media. Therefore, it's 130 millimeters. The length of the template is going to be equal to the length of the label that you need and should not exceed 349 millimeters. For our purposes today, let's just say that the length or the height is 165 millimeters. And then click Create. If you're printing on the QL300, your template should be the total size in the driver minus the margins. So if the size in the driver is 130 millimeters by 165 millimeters, the template should be 125.76 by 160.76 millimeters. It's helpful to show your ruler in your template. To do so, click on View, Rulers, and select Show Ruler. or right-click anywhere in the template and select Show Rulers. Next, right-click on the Rectangle tool to create your black mark. Select Rectangle tool. The black mark should be 2 mm by 2 mm or 4 mm by 4 mm. Set the stroke of the black mark to None and the fill to Black. Place a black mark right on the bottom edge of the template, between 5 mm and 10 mm from the left side of the template. For now, we'll place it 5 mm from the left side of the template. You can double check the size of your square black mark by clicking Shape. Make sure it's aligned to the bottom of your template. Now let's zoom out and import our image into the template. You can click File, Open, and then Browse to your artwork. Once your artwork opens, highlight the entire artwork. Then you can copy it and paste it into the template. I use Control c and then go back to our template and then press Control v to paste. Now let's talk about the positioning of our artwork in the template.
The bottom of your image should start just after the black mark from the bottom of the template. It's okay if it's aligned with the black mark, but it should not start before the end of the black mark. If you zoom in and see here, your artwork has to be above the black mark. On the left side of your image, it should be more than two millimeters from the inside edge of the black mark, or two millimeters from this right edge of the black mark. As you can see here, our black mark takes place from five millimeters to seven millimeters. And if our image starts over here at 14 millimeters, we have plenty of space. The right side of our artwork should be five millimeters or more from the right side of the template. We have about 14 millimeters here, so we have plenty of clearance. The top side of your image should be about two millimeters from the top side of the template. This amount of space will ensure that you're not wasting material and provide enough gap in case you want to use finish roll on an automatic applicator. Open up your layers panel and name this layer as print. Click on file and then save as and save the file as a PDF. Now we've finished saving and creating our first print file. Keep your template open so we can create the cut file. Now add a new layer down here and name it cut layer. Now we need to create the outline that we want to cut around the label image. The outline should be slightly smaller than the image and aligned with the top of the image. So let's create a rectangle shape as our outline. The fill of the outline should be set to none and the stroke should be set to black with a 0.1 millimeter thickness. If you use this swap fill and stroke, that will make it so the fill is none and the stroke is black. Of course, you can always click and then mark it as none or click and then mark it as black using this tool. Right click on the rectangle tool in your tools panel and select rounded rectangle tool. Now we'll need to zoom out so we can see our entire label. Make sure you use rounded corners for easier operation on the finishing system. We'll use three millimeter rounded corners. To examine the shape of your rounded rectangle and the corners, make sure your new cut layer is highlighted and click shape. This will tell you the measurements of your rectangle and this will tell you the corner radius. We'll use three millimeters on all the corners. Now we'll remove the image layer or the print file layer from this so we can have our nice clean cut layer. Let's take a look at our layers. Make sure you don't delete the black mark from your print layer. For now, I'm going to click to select it. And I'm going to click on the word rectangle and just drag it up into our cut layer. It's important that you place the black mark above the cut outline within your layer. If you notice here, I put the black mark above within our Adobe Illustrator layer. And that's really important because the LF100 or LF200 finishing system will not recognize your cut file if you don't place the black mark above the cut outline in your layer. We can highlight the entire print layer and click delete. And we're left with just the cut line and the black mark. The layer of the cut file should have only the black mark and the outside line that we're going to cut. If you have any other additional layers here, make sure to remove visibility or you can just delete them entirely. Click File, 
save as, and then save your cut file with high quality PDF. Change the name of your saved file to cut file and then whatever you want to name it. Make sure the save type is PDF and then click save. I use high quality print. Import the cut file into the software of the LF100 or LF200 and start die cutting your labels as soon as you're ready. And that's it. Now you know how to create a cut file and a print file for the LF100 or LF200 finishing system. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, please contact Tech Support or visit us at astronovaproductid.com. Thanks and have a great day.